This woman moved from a house of shame to the hall of fame in the Bible. In Hebrews 11 and verse 1, it says, Now faith is, confident, is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. Then the rest of Hebrews 11 goes on to list some amazing characters of faith. And down in verse 31, it says, By faith the harlot Rahab did not perish with those who did not believe, having received the spies with peace. And in light of our vision for the church this year of mission and living, I want to explore the courage and the faith and the ripple effect that she had and how we can glean from her story. So I have two stones with me, so this is like really smooth, perf perfectly shaped. This one is a little bit dented, it's a little bit chipped, it's not perfectly shaped. But if each of these stones are dropped into water, they will both cause a ripple effect. It is not dependent on the condition of the stone. As I said, it could be chipped, it could be ugly <laughs> um, when it is thrown into the water, but it still causes a ripple effect. When a stone is in the hand of the master craftsman, the one who knows all things, the one who has a plan and a purpose for each of us, a plan for the ordinary people, for the broken people, for important people, for unlikely people, it can have an extraordinary impact. I said it earlier, no one, no one is off God's radar in being used for his glory. Courageous faith is a faith that is real, a faith that is authentic, and a faith that is willing to risk. And like Rahab, we are called to live in the light of what will be. We're called to live in the assurance of our salvation and the God that we serve, rather than in the light of what we currently see. And how much faith does it take for me to live the way that I'm living now? And I pose that question to, the, to you. How much faith does it take to live the way that you're living? In Mark chapter 8, Jesus said, If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake and the gospels will save it. We know it's not always safe to follow Jesus, as in, like, at times it feels a little bit risky. And I can't stand here and tell you that if you give your life to Jesus, everything's going to work out and everything's going to be wonderful because that's not what the scripture tells us. The call to follow Christ is a risk. I'm sure loads of you have heard this analogy before, but where's the safest place for a plane in the hangar? Where's the safest place for a ship um, in the harbor? But that's not what they were built for. They weren't built to stay there. And Jesus didn't come and give his life so that we could sit and play it safe. He gave his life so that we could radically follow him. That's the call of Christ, and that's what Rahab has demonstrated to us. In essence, the story of Rahab is a call to live a life of faith, to live a life of courage, to live a life of compassion. It encourages us to look beyond our limitations, and do you know what? More than that, it encourages us to look beyond the labels that people have put on us, or that we have put on ourselves. It encourages us to be brave, to hold steadfast, even when the outcome seems a little bit uncertain. Regardless of who we are or of what we have done, that God loves us with an everlasting love and he has a specific purpose for each one of us. A simple scarlet cord as red as the blood of Christ would be her lifeline. God revealed his knowledge to her and then she was spurred from death. And the same is true for us. When we trust God in the un unknown, he will provide a way, even when it looks a little bit messy or even when we're not sure. Be challenged to live in the ripple effect and to influence those who are around you. Be challenged to demonstrate extraordinary faith, extraordinary courage for what? Extraordinary impact. God takes delight in his children. And you know what? He wants to write you into the narrative of his story.